So let me go to side three. The first song is Wild Man. This is where it kind of, the pace kind of picks up a notch. It's the, it was the only single off the album. Um, and it's, uh, it's basically about the Yeti. Um, and Kate takes the role of a, of a, uh, I guess part of a mountain climbing team or whatever who find find the Yeti's footprints in the snow and wipe them away because they know that if that if humanity finds him they'll kill him you know and to for research purposes or for whatever or just to prove that he exists that he exists or you know um, there's a lot of in, intriguing things in the lyrics with a lot of place names and stuff you know, they call you an animal, the Kachinjunga demon, wild man, Meto King me. Lying in my tent, I can hear your cry echoing round the mountainside. You sound lonely. While crossing the Latka La, something jumped down from the rocks. In the remote Garo Hills by Tipu Morak, we found footprints in the snow. Some very, um, uh, uh, some really good, uh, backing, I say backing vocals, but they're really pretty much as prominent as Kate's on the choruses by Andy Fairweather Lowe, a name that I've heard a lot, but I'm not really that familiar with his work, um, but uh, but uh, their vocals together sound really, sound really interesting. Um, um, you know, she records in analog, she's probably one of the few people that still does, I guess, and on this song she uses uh, kind of an, an old effect that you don't really hear anymore that I think they call it the Doppler kind of effect where you get that kind of swish sound she uses that on on here to really great effect in one part of the song and then the next song is snowed in at Wheeler Street um, and this is a duet with Elton John um, seems like a lot of Kate Bush fans um, I read read them uh, sort of critiquing this album and they're just not very fond of Elton's work on this song I don't know why though I think it's great I dig it um, he's singing in a much lower register than he usually does um, but it's uh, basically about two people who keep meeting each other and losing each other in different points of history starting with the, the burning of Rome and uh, uh, see on the on the, I saw you on the steps in Paris and you know and then during World War Two and, uh, and it's a couple of, and, you know, in the London smog and and finally in 9/11 in New York. Um, There's another one that kind of, a lot of the songs on this one kind of build in intensity over over the course of of, of their running time. Um, uh, let's see, excuse me, I'm sorry to bother you, but don't I know you? There's just something about you. Haven't we met before? We've been in love forever. When we got to the top of the hill, we saw Rome burning. I just let you walk away. I've never forgiven myself. I saw you on the steps in Paris. You were with someone else. Couldn't you, couldn't you see that should have been me? I just walked on by. Then we met in 42, but we were on different sides. I hid you under my bed, but they took you away. Um... But the, I think the singing by both of them is actually really good. It's, it gets, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot more, I, I know I keep using the same words over and over. I swear, I really do have a vocabulary. But when I do things like this, it just all disappears. I don't know where it goes to. But, um, but the vocals definitely get quite intense towards the end of the song. Then we go to side four. The first song is 50 Words for Snow, the title track. This is probably the most humorous thing on the album. Um, and this one is basically a duet of sorts with Stephen Fry as Professor Joseph Yupik. Uh, and it's basically um, inspired by the, um, the, the myth that Eskimos have 50 words for snow. They don't. So 
she created her own and the verses are just listing those words one drifting two twisting three white out four blackbird braille five wenseless air six avalanche with him reading her numbering them and him reading off the words and then she sings the choruses um, but uh, some of them were kind of humorous uh, um, uh, ankle breaker eraso dust schnemista flop and a lot of them have kind of an onomatopoeia kind of feel to them like you know um, terra blizza vanilla swarm uh, Melto Blast, um, Bad for Trains, <laughs> Bone from Polar Fur. <laughs> uh, this one's probably the most kind of, this one and Wild Man are the ones that are the most kind of rhythmic, somewhat up tempo kind of songs on the album. Um, and then the last song. <clears throat> is back to the more piano driven in fact it's really just kate and a piano and some and a bit of strings um called among angels this is a one of the more comforting songs i think in in kate's work just beautiful lyrics um and they will carry you o'er the walls if you need us just call rest your weary world in their hands lay your broken laugh at their feet I can see angels around you. They shimmer like mirrors in summer. There's someone who's loved you forever, but you don't know it. You might feel it and just not show it.
next. Radiohead in Rainbows. This was released October 10th, 2007, or at least the download version was. Um, of course, you know, they released it as a download first and let people pay whatever they wanted to pay for it, at least for a few months anyway. And uh, I think the physical release came out kind of early the next year, the CD and final versions. And it was a number one album. So, um, so this album uh, doesn't lean as heavily on um, kind of electronic sounds as their last few albums. Certainly, certainly less uh, electronic elements on it than Kid A and Amnesiac, and uh, and uh, less also than their previous album Hail to the Thief. Um, the first song, uh, Fifteen Step is uh, uh, by Radiohead standards a pretty jaunty little tune. <laughs> uh, it's a fairly upbeat, at least upbeat sounding song. Um, got a got a really kind of uh, propulsive uh, rhythm to it. Um, there actually is a and it really interesting electronic percussion kind of element in here, this kind of scratchy kind of thing going on in it. Um, and, uh, and some really good guitar work on it too. How come I end up where I started? How come I end up where I went wrong? Won't take my eyes off the ball again. You reel me out, then you cut the string. The next song is Body Snatchers, which is probably the most kind of raw and one of the more intense songs on here. Um, kind of more of kind of a kind of punk edge to it. Um, uh, with with Tom York kind of s snarling uh, lyrics like I have no idea what I am talking about I am trapped in this body and can't get out and then I have no idea what you are talking about your mouth moves with only with someone's hand up your ass <laughs> and and that's right about that point when the song actually kicks it up a notch and gets more intense uh, the second half of the song is even better than the first with York kind of unleashing himself even more <laughs> And after that, there's a huge downshift into the next song, Nude, which uh, was actually a top 40 single. They, it reached uh, number 37 on the U.S. chart. Um, I think there's some slight controversy over that. Some people think that it was because they uh, gave you the option of buying multiple versions of it so that you can create your own mix or something like that but uh, it's one of only two songs they had that actually made the US top 40 uh, I wonder what the other one was <laughs> I'll tell you one thing about the other one I'm, I'm surprised that it it only just barely made the top 40 too I'm really kind of surprised about that actually. but um this is definitely one of the more kind of ethereal, kind of dreamlike <laughs> songs on there. It's also probably the slowest song. Uh, I don't mean that. <clears throat> I don't mean that as a criticism. I mean it's it's a great song, um, but I could read you the entire lyric right now. Uh, and with then there are no repetitions. This is the entire lyric. Don't get any big ideas. They're not going to happen. Uh, you, it's hard to read. You, you paint yourself white and fill up with noise, but there'll be something missing. Now that you found it, it's gone. Now that you feel it, you don't. You've gone off the rails. So don't get any big ideas. They're not going to happen. 
you'll go to hell for what your dirty mind is thinking. And then the next song is Weird Fishes, and I don't know how to pronounce this word. I'm Arpeggy, Arpeggi, Arpeggi, Arpeggi. Um, I think most people just call it Weird Fishes, don't they? I think this is one of my favorite songs on here. Um, some really great guitar work on it. Um, uh, and some and great drumming on it. Um, I don't, know, I don't really know. Don't really know what to say. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, I don't know, I'll just read some lyrics. Um, <laughs> uh, see, uh, in the deepest ocean, the bottom of the sea, your eyes they turn me. Why should I stay here? Why should I stay? I'd be crazy not to follow. Follow where you lead. Your eyes they turn me turn me into phantoms I fall to the edge of the earth and fall off um, really cool video for this one um, actually uh, is it four yeah four of the songs uh, are actually animation contest winners uh, videos for four of the songs um, they had some kind of a contest on some animation website uh, one of them was 15 step one of the winners was for was for a video for 15 step and then one for weird fishes um, one for videotape and one for reckoner uh, the weird fishes one is my favorite though if you if you haven't seen it I definitely recommend you take a look at it <laughs> it's pretty wild <laughs> um, so the next song is All I Need, which is uh, probably one of Tom York's more, most kind of romantic songs, I think, you know, so. Uh, kind of, it's very kind of vulnerable. Um, yeah. um, see, I am a moth who just wants to share your light. I'm just an insect trying to get out of the night. I only stick with you because there are no others. You are all I need. You are all I need. I am in the middle of your picture, lying in the reeds. Uh, I love the kind of the the, the bassy uh, keyboard uh, sound that. Uh, that's playing the main riff on here. And I love the way uh, Phil Selway, towards the end, just kind of explodes on the cymbals. Um, um, I don't know, it's just a, just a cool song. Uh, and then we switch to side two. And the first song is, and here we go again, Faust Arp, or is it ARP, like the ARP synthesizer? I've never heard I've never heard ARP as a word before, but anyway, okay, so uh, it's strange thing about this one is one of the strange is that uh, it's the most it's the lyrics are pretty rapid fire because it's got the most lyrics of any of the songs on here except for maybe jigsaw falling into place and it's by far the shortest, just a little over two minutes. It's another another beautiful arrangement. Um, it's uh, just acoustic guitar and a string section. Um, see, um, uh, squeeze the tubes and empty bottles. I take a bow, take a bow, take a bow. It's what you feel, not what you ought to, what you ought to. The elephant that's in the room is tumbling, 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 duplicate and triplicate. Plastic bags in duplicate and triplicate, dead from the neck up. I guess I'm stuffed, stuffed, stuffed. We thought you had it in you, but not, not, not. Exactly where do you, get, where do you get off is enough, is enough. I love you, but enough is enough. Enough of that stuff. There's no real reason. Some interesting lyrics on that one. No, not sure. I'm not sure what, what they're about, but... <laughs> I, I struggle with this stuff sometimes. I don't know. 
Uh, I'm trying to figure out what some songs are about, but and the next song is Reckoner. Uh, it's another great song. Um, uh, really like what they did with the, the percussion, with the drums on on this one. Kind of sounds like they distance the drums from the mic to get more of the kind of the room uh, uh, reverberations or whatever in and uh, and again some really nice string arrangements um, but probably the best thing on here in terms of the way the in terms of the instrumentation is Tom York's voice uh, which is, which is uh, probably, I guess, Tom in his most kind of feminine. He sounds, uh, his voice is singing, he's singing in a higher register. And his, his singing is just really good on this one. Um, uh, let's see. Reckoner, you can't take it with you, dancing for your pleasure. You are not to blame for bittersweet distractor. Dare not speak its name, dedicated to all human beings. And then the next song is my favorite song, House of Cards. Um, I I haven't read anything about the ins whatever may have inspired this song, but I've got a feeling that that he must have seen the movie The Ice Storm, because um, the lyrics seem to indicate some scenes from that movie. Um, uh, the infrastructure will collapse from voltage spikes. Throw your keys in the bowl. Kiss your husband goodnight. You know that there was a scene in the movie where, where uh, this is, takes place in the '70s, and I guess this was a thing back then. Although I I lived in the '70s and I don't recall any such thing that the adults were doing at that time. I never saw anything like that. But you know, you throw your keys in the bowl, and you'd go home with whoever keys you grabbed out of the bowl or something instead of your own wife or husband and and then that infrastructure will collapse from voltage spikes I don't know if that's maybe a reference to the power lines going down and collapsing in the road and one of the characters gets killed touching touching one of the live wires in the street after the big ice storm I don't I don't know, but I, I just I don't know. I just feel like uh, like it's uh, at least partly inspired by that movie. But I'm gonna try to play a clip from it. Of course, the last time I tried to play a Radiohead clip, I got it blocked. But uh, I'm gonna try again. Maybe I'll maybe I'll get this one in. I don't know. But it's just a great song.
And then the next song is Jigsaw Falling Into Place. And this song probably has the most kind of driving rhythm on the album, I would, I, I would say, with the tension building steadily throughout the song. And Tom York is awesome on this. I mean, he... Uh, he, he seems to know just when to kick it up a notch and then another notch and then another notch you know um, it's just it's just a, a great performance all around from the entire band but I think especially Tom York um, see, before you run away from me before you're lost between the notes just as you take the mic just as you dance 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 a jigsaw falling into place so there is nothing to explain you you eye each other as you pass she looks back and you look back not just once not just twice wish away your nightmare wish away the nightmare you got the light you can feel it on your back you got the light you can feel it on your back your jigsaw falling into place and then the last song is videotape um there's been a lot of attention uh, uh focused on this song in the last couple of years, somebody, of course, there was a, it's a song that's uh, been around for, had been around for quite some time before they actually recorded, how am I kidding, <laughs> before they recorded this version of it, and it had existed live in a totally different arrangement, totally different tempo and rhythm and everything, but somebody discovered that basically that original rhythm and I, I don't know anything about how music is written so I, but I guess that that original rhythm is still in this version of the song it's just kind of hiding in there or something but uh, it's it's probably one of the saddest lyrics on here it's uh, Basically, I guess it reads kind of, it's kind of like a, a suicide note of a sort. Um, um, this is my way of saying goodbye because I can't do it face to face. So I'm talking to you before. No matter what happens now, you shouldn't be afraid because I know today has been the most perfect day I have ever seen. It's a... Uh, it's, I know I say this on every album, but it's it's a great album closer. The song, of course, the, the album begins with a, like I said, a jaunty little tune. <laughs> and it ends in a beautiful melancholy. Last one in this bunch. Back to Kate. Ariel. God, I love this album. This is just an incredible album. Uh, see, released November 7th, 2005. Reached number 48 on the album chart. And that's, that's one of her better chartings here in America. She didn't, you know, she, did, she only had like one top 40 album. Give you five guesses what, which one that was. Um, this is just such a great album. Of course, it's divided into both records. This uh, has its own title, and this is actually really kind of a, a what you get, what I guess you might call a song suite, uh, kind of with bird song, kind of tying it together. It's pretty neat. Um, Just got this one just uh, just you know, a couple of weeks ago on vinyl. This is the new the new version, uh, the new uh, reissue version, minus the contributions of a certain person who I won't name that used to feature on this album. Um,
it's great, great artwork. Um, This was Kate's first album in 12 years. Um, after her last album, The Red Shoes, I think she kind of gotten a bit burnt out and she had some personal issues. You know, her mother had died and her longtime relationship had broken up. Uh, I guess she just kind of kind of regroup <laughs> and uh, she. Uh, uh, found a new relationship, um, possibly married, I don't know if they really got married or whatever, it doesn't matter, but anyway, and then they had a kid together, and she was busy raising him, <clears throat> um, and, and he, uh, this is Albert, who's always credited on the album, because he does appear on the album, as Bertie, he was, I think he was probably about five or six years old when he did his parts on here um, uh, and although I think she'd been kind of recording bits and pieces of it kind of off and on all during that time uh, she had her own home studio so this one's a bit um, a bit more, a bit more see, mellow but more kind of um, like pastoral kind of feel to it, which is probably more uh, reflective of of her life at the time, you know, um, and, but it's also, I think, probably her most sort of wildly imaginative album since Hounds of Love uh, 20 years earlier, um, <clears throat> so... Uh, the album is divided into two sections. Uh, record one or CD one is entitled A Sea of Honey. And side one begins with the only single from the album, King of the Mountain. Um, which is kind of uh, it's a bit about Kind of about Elvis and and the rumors that he's still alive but gone into hiding and all this kind of stuff. And somehow kind of tying it in with Citizen Kane to um, Elvis, are you out there somewhere looking like a happy man in the snow with Rosebud and King of the Mountain? Okay, this is about five minutes after after the last thing I said. Um, <laughs> I've been sitting here for the past five minutes or so trying to think of what it is I like about this song. I can't think. I don't know. I don't know. It's just a great song. I can't think of anything specific. It's just a great song. <laughs> um, it's great guitar work. You know, great drumming on it. I mean, uh, Kate's great on it. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. It's just a great song. Um, and then the next song is Pie. Actually, it's as in 3.14, etc., and so forth, so forth. Um, it's uh, about a man who is fascinated with numbers, obsessed with numbers, and uh, specifically the calculation of pie. Um, and it's kind of Kate's. Uh, experiment with trying to draw emotion out of numbers um, it's it's just one of those kind of things that only Kate would 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 do I mean um, you know um, the chorus is basically is well here's an example of the chorus one of the choruses three point one four one five nine two six five three five eight nine seven nine three two three eight four six two six four three three eight three two seven nine <laughs> and <clears throat> it's, it's 
got a really it's got a really great kind of groove to it. Um, great bass playing from uh, Eberhard Weber, who uh, uh, has worked with Kate quite a lot. It's uh, pretty appropriately uh, considering the uh, the subject matter, uh, pretty appropriately intricate uh, bass work. Um, it's a really cool song. Um, and the next song is Bertie, which is about her son. Um, it's uh, Kate accompanied by a group of Renaissance musicians um, playing Renaissance era instruments. Um, here comes the sunshine, here comes that son of mine, here comes the everything, here's a song and a song for him. Sweet kisses, three wishes, lovely birdie. Uh, I think among Kate fans, from what I've read and stuff, this is probably the least liked song on the album. I, I like it. I think it's a pretty cool little song, but it's... Um, there's a bit of repetition in it, but, I mean, I don't know, I, I like it. It's, a, it's just a nice little... Um, lovely little acoustic tune. Uh, it's a good song. And the next song is an amazing song called Mrs. Bartolozzi. Um, it's one of two songs on the album that's just Kate s singing and playing piano. Um, there's no other accompaniment, instrumental accompaniment on it. Um, and uh, people who've written about the album I've, I've read a lot of people saying stupid things about this song saying it's just a song about a washing machine because that because that's the chorus washing machine, washing machine, washing machine so they think the song is just about a washing machine definitely a song where you kind of read between the lines a bit um it seems to be ostensibly about a woman who's doing the washing, um, but there is uh, an underlying kind of sense of loss. I mean, um, I guess I mean it. Well, I'm just going to read a verse. Um, I watch them going round and round, my blouse wrapping itself around your trousers. Oh, the waves are going out, my skirt floating up around my waist as I wade out into the surf. Oh, and the waves are coming in. Oh, and the waves are going out. Oh, and you're standing right behind me. Little fish swim between my legs. Oh, and the waves are coming in. Oh, and the waves are going out. Oh, and the waves are coming in. Out of the corner of my eye, I think I see you standing outside. But it's just your shirt hanging on the washing line, waving its arm as the wind blows by. And it looks so alive, nice and white just like it's climbed right out of my washing machine. So, I mean, it's, it's neat the way she kind of goes into this kind of, um, you know, she's sitting there, standing there washing the clothes going around and, and all of a sudden it's, she's, it's like she's out in the ocean, you know, with her, what does it say, um, her skirt floating up around her waist, weighed out into the surf, the waves are going, coming in, the waves are going out. You know, um, and, but then she's kind of pulled back to reality. <laughs> uh, this happens in another song later on in the album, but in a much bigger way. Um, something similar. Um, and, uh, I don't know, you get this sense that whoever it is she's talking about is not in her life anymore. Um, you know, it's, but it's just your shirt hanging on the washing line, waving its arm as the wind blows by, and it looks so alive, nice and white, just like it's, you know. Um, and her voice at this point actually kind of, kind of gets, kind of wavers a bit. It's, uh, it's not note perfect. It kind of, she kind of, um, but she didn't fix it. She left it like it was. It's, um, it 
it's it's a great vocal performance from her as well then we go to side two and the first song is how to be invisible uh this is um um basically the lyrics are i guess kind of a, a witch's spell to make oneself uh socially invisible um you know to kind of disappear into the woodwork <laughs> and uh um you know, it's, you know, Kate is one that's always shied away from the limelight and from the spotlight and always wanted to have, uh, have her life be as private as possible. And that's definitely reflected in this song. Of course, I know that, of course, I know there are a lot, quite a, quite a few people who think that Kate is a witch, so, <laughs> um, See, I found a book on how to be invisible. On the edge of the labyrinth, under a veil you must never lift. Pages you must never turn in the labyrinth. You stand in front of a million doors, and each one holds a million more. Corridors that lead to the world of the invisible. Corridors that twist and turn. Corridors that blister and burn. Eye of Braille, hem of anorak, stem of wallflower, hair of doormat. Um, and um, her husband... Uh, Dan McIntosh uh, does some really cool guitar work on here. Um, the only way I can des describe it is to say it's, uh, it's gentle distortion. Um, um, and then the next song is Joni, which is uh, about Joan of Arc. It's a, it's a really cool song. Um, Lots of things kind of going on in the background in this one, you know, like, you, at, at one point you can hear yelling, if you listen closely in the background, you hear yelling, on guard, on guard! <laughs> um, um, let's see, um, all the banners stop waving and the flags stop flying and the silence comes over, thousands of soldiers, thousands of soldiers. Who is that girl? Do I know her face? Who is that girl? Joni, Joni wears a golden cross, and she looks so beautiful in her armor. Joni, Joni blows a kiss to God, and she never wears a ring on her finger. Really neat. Uh, the closing of this song is really cool, where um, she starts speaking in French, kind of down in the mix a bit. It's sometimes kind of hard to make out what she's saying, but she's, uh, it's, I think it's supposed to be like her... Uh, basically as Joan of Arc praying to her patron saints Saint Catherine, Saint Marguerite um, it's a uh, it's really cool <laughs> and the next song is A Choral Room which um, yeah, it's got is probably one of her best songs um, it is a song where she um, confronts the death of her mother in a, in a way that only, only she could, I think. Um, uh, very, a very moving, um, in a very moving way. But she kind of... Uh, uh, she starts by describing a fishing village that is now submerged underwater and, and she goes into the, the, the past of this town there was stuff with planes crashing down many a pilot drowned you know and, and all this kind of big kind of grandiose things that had happened here and then all of a sudden a sense memory just brings all of this down into one intimate memory of her mother and her little brown jug which apparently she really did have a little brown jug um, and and then eventually it kind of she kind of comes back out of it and back into this larger world this larger thing with this submerged fishing village at, at the end but 
the the best part of the song is that moment when when the scale of the lyrics just shrinks down to this one small intimate little memory and I'm, I, yeah I'm gonna have to play a clip of this one um, uh, yeah I'm not even gonna quote any lyrics I'm just gonna play a clip of it um, and this is the other song that uh, that's just her and the piano there's one brief passage with a male vocal on it but other than that it's just her and the piano <laughs> That takes care of record one, A Sky of Honey. And then record two is comprised of a song, Sweet, I guess is what, what you might call it, um, called A Sky of Honey. Um, this is basically takes place over a 24 hour period from dawn to dawn uh, with the main linking device being bird song. Um, uh, this is probably one of the coolest things she ever did. Um, first track is Prelude, which is just a little minute and a half introductory piece with her son, her um, know, five or six year old son, Bertie, playing the son, S U N. Uh, who's saying, Mummy, Daddy, today is full of birds. Sounds like they're saying words. 
Yeah, if you listen closely, yes, it does sound like they're saying words. It's hard to make out what, what they're saying, but uh, yeah, yeah, they're saying something. And then we go into prologue. This one kind of this one kind of sets the uh, the, uh, the the mode for proceedings on this this uh, uh, for a sky of honey um, in the way that it slowly builds up uh, one piece at a time starts with a it's kind of pulsating electronic um, repeated note that goes through the entire song or maybe it's a synthesizer but, um, and then Kate's piano kicks in it's really beautiful um, piano playing on it and then the bass and then quite a bit later some strings kind of kick in and then only about a minute before the song is over, the drums kick in. In spite of that build-up, it's still, from beginning to end, the most um, gentle piece on, in A Sky of Honey. Um, because the whole thing, the whole piece is kind of, there's an overall kind of trajectory that is kind of building up to something as it goes along um, it's really really beautiful lyrics um, it's gonna be so good now it's gonna be so good can you see the lark ascending oh so romantic swept me off my feet like some kind of magic like the light in Italy lost its way across the sea Roma Roma mia tesoro mio bella piano di sole luce vale cose bene bene pianissimo pianissimo Next song is An Architect's Dream. Uh, the percussion kind of set, well, it, it's, in fact, it, all of it is just, um, the, the only percussion is some uh, you know, congas or bongos or something like that. I don't know what exactly, but, um, and again, great lyrics. Uh, basically, she has now, uh, it's like, in the afternoon now, and now she's watching a painter um, uh, painting, um, uh, so working on a pavement. I guess he's like doing some kind of artwork on a pavement or on a sidewalk or something. But uh, again, really great lyrics. Uh, the flick of a wrist twisting down to the hips, so the lovers begin with a kiss in a tryst. It's just a smudge, but what it becomes in his hands, curving and sweeping, rising and reaching, I could feel what he was feeling. Lines like these have got to be an architect's dream. I should mention, um, an architect's dream, this is the first of two tracks that were altered for the new reissued version, where that certain person was removed and replaced. Uh, interestingly, with her, her son Albert again, this time as a young adult um, and interestingly he is still credited for his role as the son as Bertie and as his role as the painter he's credited as Albert McIntosh um, but he uh, there's a spoken word bit at the beginning that that other guy did and now he does a different spoken word uh, bit at the at the beginning, talking as the painter. But then the next song is the painter's link, and on this one, they just, they completely replaced the track. They um, they actually replaced it with the live version from her live album before the dawn, on the on the new reissue, and they did it perfectly seamlessly, because her son Albert did the painter, in the live version of a sky of honey. Um, in those shows and on that album um, as I said it's just a minute and a half piece with the painter uh, bummed out because the rain is washing away his painting uh, it says it's raining what has become of my painting all the colors are running 
so all the colors run, so all the colors run. See what they have become? A wonderful sunset. And then it goes into Sunset, which is my favorite song on the album. I'm definitely going to play a clip of this one. Um, uh, some beautiful piano work from Kate. Um, and it's got one of my favorite lyrics that she wrote. Um, who knows who wrote that song of summer that blackbirds sing at dusk. This is a song of color where sands sing in crimson, red, and rust then climb into bed and turn to dust. Um, uh, I just think that's great. <laughs> um, she seems to have a thing about blackbirds. Blackbirds pop up a lot in her songs. Um, and it's a fairly uh, you know, pretty quiet song until about two-thirds of the way through and then all of a sudden it switches into this really cool flamenco uh, thing towards the end with some really great uh, the first of two really great backing vocals from uh, Gary Brooker of Procol Harum who's I think one of my favorite singers really um, I've always loved listening to Gary Brooker sing. Um, more from him later, um, <laughs> and later in, in these videos, um, on down the line. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to play some of this one. Next one is Ariel Tal, which is another short one. It's about a minute long, and it's probably it's one of the more interesting pieces on here. No lyrics. It's uh, just Kate and the birds uh, uh, singing together. Kate uh, basically imitating the birds as they sing. Um, kind of. Kind of strange and wonderful little little piece of music. <laughs> then we go to side, well, Sky of Honey side two or album side four, and the first song is Somewhere in Between. Uh, some really great, really nice um, kind of snare based uh, light drumming on this one, and, and great organ work and backing vocals by Gary Brooker on it. Um, I know, it's just another beautiful song. That's beautiful song is a pretty pretty good way to describe most of the songs on on a sky of honey. Um, 
again some really great lyrics um, somewhere in between the waxing and the waning wave somewhere in between what the song and the silence says somewhere in between the ticking and the talking clock uh, somewhere in a dream between sleep and waking up somewhere in between breathing out and breathing in like twilight is neither night nor morning um, just a cool song um, it ends with uh, the chorus saying good night sun good night sun as in s-u-n and then the sun five-year-old bertie saying good night mum <laughs> and then there's actually a bit of a gap it's the only place on the sky of honey where there seems to be a bit of a gap before the next song starts and that song starts with the chorus saying the words sweet dreams so it so in that sense it does kind of carry on from the end of the previous song but but the next song is nocturne um as as you can see from the title this is we're getting in we're into the night time now um great imagery in the lyrics that uh that the music definitely supports it's it's a really good song to be kind of out driving and out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night <laughs> um, or you could be doing what they're doing in this song and skinny dipping in the ocean in the middle of the night um, but the the imagery and the lyrics what really it really def it really really paints a picture um, in this song um, see uh, could be in a dream our clothes are on the beach the prints of our feet lead right up to the sea no one no one is here no one no one is here we stand in the Atlantic we become panoramic the stars are caught in our hair the stars are on our fingers a veil of diamond dust just reach up and touch it the skies above our heads the seas around our legs in milky silky water we swim further and further and this is the song where the pace really starts to pick up I mean it's it's very kind of mid-tempo through most of it, but it's a very kind of insistent mid-tempo kind of acoustic feel. It's the longest song on the album. Um, it's, it's eight minutes or some odd. But then eventually towards the end, it gets a lot more kind of intense um, with the, some backing vocals by Law Cream of 10CC doing some really kind of high uh, backing vocals and the final part of it where it uh, um, really kind of kicks into a higher gear um, it's I think I may play a clip of this too <laughs>
and then we come to the final track Ariel and this is the most sort of rocking song on the album um, it's also pretty long it's seven minutes and some odd um, great guitar work from her husband Dan McIntosh um, probably the only really sort of what you call lead guitar work on here uh, over pretty much the the last third of the song um, um, definitely the most kind of celebratory track on the album as the sun has risen and dawn has arrived and um, uh, there's a really interesting moment halfway through the, the lyric portion of the song where uh, all of a sudden everything kind of drops away and Kate just starts laughing like laughing maniacally <laughs> joyously and maniacally at the same time while the birds are chirping and the the basic idea is that the birds are that they sound like they're laughing and so Kate's laughing along with them it's kind of in a way in that sense it's kind of a reprise of Ariel Tal except now they're now the birds and Kate are laughing um, um, and then it gets up to the second chorus, and then, um, and then that awesome guitar work from her husband kicks in. And then there's actually another verse, more or less, that's where the words are completely obscured. It's it's impossible to make out what she's saying through through most of it. She, she did some kind of weird thing where, you can, where it's all kind of I don't know how to describe it, but but you can't make out what she's saying. <laughs> That's another typical Kate thing. She loves to kind of put kind of hidden stuff <laughs> in her music. Um, and it just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and, builds and pff, it's over. <laughs> um, it's just, it's just a, another great album closer. Um, it's just This is just a great, great album. God, it's such a great album. Um, yeah. Uh, that's the last one. That's it until next time.